Hey there, this is Andy O'Neill, and in this video, I'm going to show you through my entire email productivity system. Um, you're going to learn how I check email, uh, which is actually twice per day, and I actually have that scheduled for 20 minutes, two times per day. Uh, there's actually days where I don't even check it, and I'm still able to, the next day, when I have an extra bit of email loaded up I can still do it in 15 or 20 minutes per day and if you compare to what is typical I found some research that said uh, people are people are checking email like 8 to 11 hours per week and so which is crazy and I want to show you this is a little calculator I put together uh, on my website as I was thinking through the cost of email uh, it's really astounding to what it really is, what, what really the cost is. So let's say, uh, let's say you make eighty-three thousand uh, dollars a year. Uh, that's about forty hours uh, a an hour. And let's say you spend eight hours on email. And let's say you know from eight hours, if you could go from eight hours to six hours, a reduction of two hours, um, you're your uh, ROI, the value of that reduced time would be four thousand dollars. You know, if if you're spending eight hours a week on email, uh, based on your your hourly rate and annual salary, you're spending sixteen thousand dollars a year of your time checking email, which is just it, just an extraordinary. I mean, just just a crazy number. And I've checked and checked and checked. These numbers are correct. Um, and so I, you know, I've got an accelerator that I'm looking to, to, to launch in the future. And I had it priced at $379. And so like, if you spent $379 for me to help walk you through this process, uh, it would be an ROI of 998%, a thousand percent basically is the ROI. So I want to, I want to show you through this process, this, uh, system that I have for checking my email. Uh, again, I used to be six months, uh, six months ago, I left my email open all the time. I used my inbox as my task list. Uh, both of those things are terrible things to do. And, um, since then I've made major strides in, in productivity. I'm able to get more work done during the day because I'm ignoring emails except for those two times a day. And I actually have some automations and systems in place to help me manage the email. So if you're looking at this, you're like, oh, man, like I've got a friend in a community I'm in, uh, you know, she's got 1800 uh, emails in her inbox and 27,000 in her per, uh, promotions tab. And she's just like, I I'm just drowning in mail. Um, if if that describes you and that's kind of an extreme case, at least I hope you might be you might be more extreme than that. If that describes you, I hope you'll watch this and I hope you'll go through this um, this system and and put some of these things in place. Um, I, I've got some automations I'm going to show you. I'm actually going to put those on Gumroad. You can go get those there. I'm going to put the blueprints from the, all the automations that I show you and you could import those into your make.com account um, to help automate some of your systems. So to get started here, um, just kind of some prerequisites, some things. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for my uh, inbox pre-assessment. Uh, basically, it's going to like take a stock of where you are with your current email flow and kind of give you a score. So as you go through these things, there'll be a, a post assessment you can take and see how well you've improved, what areas you've improved. Um, the thing is, I'm going to show you, you're going to require a make.com account. So you'll need to make .com account. Um, I'm using Chrome. I'm going to give you some uh, recommendations for extensions, Chrome extensions. So I would recommend you use Chrome. Uh, use the webmail version of Chrome. Don't be using like Outlook installed on your computer. Um, the Outlook on your computer is, is uh, old school, really old school. So try to be using the webmail for Gmail. And then I'm using a Google Workspace account. So some of the things I'm going to share with you will apply to a Microsoft account, um, but I'm specifically going to be using a Gmail account. So if you haven't done it yet, go take that inbox mastery pre-assessment and then uh, come back and, and we'll continue. 
All right, that's the prerequisites. Let's go into this first section here. Um, so I'm going to be using automation um, f for doing analysis of my inbox. And I will show you that uh, in a little bit. That's kind of going to be the end. First thing I want to show you is the overall workflow and diagram that I have. All right, so here is that diagram. So I want to show this to you. Um, Again, this, this is how I basically do uh, my email and kind of the workflow that I designed for me that, that I think you could you could easily learn and add, to, add in. Uh, first of all, at the top, don't let email rule your day. Work comes first. Email is not your top priority. Um, it is an asynchronous communication, meaning because somebody emails you, it doesn't mean you have to email them right back. Now, if it's an urgent thing, sure, but train your train your team train the people you work with if there's something urgent like there's a fire um, they need to call you uh, or text you okay so email should not be uh, the urgent thing that has to be run be done right now uh, my goal for you in this is that you hit inbox zero once per week all right I hit a inbox zero most every day um, it's rare. I'll leave an email in there. It's like, I really need to reply to that, but it's not a high priority. So I'll leave maybe one lingering in there like that, but really you need to hit inbox zero at least once a week, um, with this, with this system, uh, and then setting email expectations, uh, again, talking to your team, uh, saying, Hey, I'm going to check email twice a day and that's it. Uh, if there's something that's blowing up. I need to look at right away. Um, let me know. Text me, call me, come get me, that kind of thing. Uh, and then try to think about this mentality of being hard to reach. Um, don't respond to every request you get for this or that or meetings or that kind of thing. Um, those are just time killers. You just kind of got to be hard to reach. You can't respond to every email. You just you just can't. And um, so that's that's what that is. All right. So responding to emails. Um, I kind of put these in, in three categories, uh, zero to two minutes. Can I, can I reply in three to five sentences? Um, it's a quick reply. Uh, you should, you should never again, write, you know, huge, long emails full of text. Nobody's reading them and you're wasting your time writing them. So three to five sentences, um, is, is, my max. If I can't do it in three to five sentences, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to fire up loom and do a loom video. If you're not familiar with loom, uh, this is it here. Uh, you can click on it. I, I actually have a browser extension. Uh, I click on it. I hit start recording. It shows my screen. It can show me if I want, or, you know, I've got camera off here. I can turn camera on. I'm using it for my other recording. But sign up for Loom. You can get a free account. Uh, and I would even encourage you to stay with the free account because the free account has a five minute limit. So that's going to force you to respond via video talking like this, showing on your screen if you need to in five minutes or less. And once you do the Loom video, you say, hey, check out this video. You paste it in there. You say you sign off and you're done. So you're sending like the body of your email is a link to a loom video. And I do these all the time. I, I you can even go to my website and purchase uh, a loom video that you can send to me if you need help with make. I mean, I, I, I fulfill make co-building with these loom videos. And uh, once I have a client established, I mean, I've got a client sends me, you know, three to five loom videos a week, uh, with a question and I turn on the timer, I build the time, uh, and I, I respond, I watch the video and I respond and it's a, it's a fantastic asynchronous communication tool. He can send it to me and it can sit in my inbox until I get to it and I can reply and then he can see the reply. And the cool thing is you can reply in the video. So let's say the video is four minutes long and I watch and I get to a point and I was like, Oh, I need to say something. I can record a video response at that point in the video, or I can type a message right there. So all of the communication is uh, wrapped up and in inside of that Loom video. If it's going to take more than five minutes, six plus minutes to complete, then that becomes a task. And so I actually have a 
in my inbox. Right, I gotta open my, there we go. Right down here, I have a create Monday task label. And so if I have a task that needs to be something done, delete that. Um, I'm processing my email. See, like this is all the email I have and it's been uh, several days. Um, I can just drag it. I can just drag it into that label and let's go look at that. Okay, so here it is. Uh, and so it's, it's watching emails. So it's looking at the emails and uh, let's see. Yeah, I've got, I've got a filter. Um, I'm not bringing in Monday things because that would be a loop. And I'm searching. I am looking for, I think I saved the thread here. Yeah, the thread ID. So a thread ID, if you have a email sequence that goes back and forth, I get an email, I reply, I get an email, I reply. That's all one thread. So what I've actually done here is I'm saving that thread ID in my Monday board. And if I get it, if I add this to Monday and I get a reply, it gets added to that thread. Um, so it keeps, keeps that information together. So I'm watching, I'm watching Gmail and then I'm searching for that thread ID. If I don't find it, go to the diagram. All right. So I'm watching email. It's here's my label. It's underscore create Monday task. You can use ClickUp, you can use Asana, whatever you want to use to create tasks. I use Monday. And so I'm, I got a Gmail filter looking for that label. Uh, I am searching the, my Monday board, my Monday task board for that thread. Um, and if it doesn't find it, it's going to create an item and create an update. The cool thing is, is when new emails come in and it matches this, I'm actually creating updates. So there's an update on the Monday item for each email that I received, even after I've created the task. Uh, and then if it exists, I'm, I'm just creating an update here on the, uh, on the item. So that's, that's how I, back to my diagram, that, that's how I schedule a task. If it's going to be six, if, if it's work, if I've got to log in, I've got to fix something, build something. There's a, you know, there's an error I need to fix. I just create a task. And what that has done is it's gotten me out of my inbox for task management. And now I'm, I'm using Monday for task management, which is what Monday is for. And that is not what email is for. So that's, that's kind of what, what I'm doing there. So I have, I have three stages. Let me zoom out on this a little bit. Stage one, stage two, stage three. So stage one is, this is my triage. This is my, my items to reply to first. And so the first thing I'm looking at is, is high value emails or high value senders, um, high value emails, people that are like, Hey, I need a quote. Hey, can we chat? Maybe, you, maybe I'd like to be your client. Potentially they don't say it that way. Uh, high value senders are, you know, clients that I have big projects with a lot going on, that kind of thing. First thing I'm going to do is say, Hey, who, what are the, what are the high value emails or the high value senders that I need to pay attention first? Uh, because reality is if people are paying you money, they, they want your attention. They want your attention first. And so I will, I will reply to those again. I'm using this right here, three to five sentences, send a loom. If it's three to five minutes or schedule a task, a lot of times it's schedule a task. And so I schedule a task. I reply, I say, Hey, I'll work on this. You know, I'm blocking out time tomorrow to work on this. And then I archive it. Here's a big thing. I archive everything. I don't, del I, I rarely ever delete anything. Um, space is cheap. Email space is cheap. I'm, you know, I'm not using, I'm using like 20%, 30% of my email quota. And I've been using that email, this email account for 12 years. It's cheap. Archive it, especially since a lot of this that I'm going to talk about is kind of run and gun quick things. Um, you don't want to be deleting stuff. You want it there to be able to find it and, and refer back to it. Uh, and then next is urgent. And then like, here's, here's kind of the triage question. Is it important? Is it urgent and important? Yes. I'm going to reply and archive it. Uh, if not, I'm going to, I mean, if it's, if it's not for me or 
Like if, you know, if it's urgent, but I'm carbon copy, like if I don't need to do anything, I'm just going to, just going to archive it uh, or forward to somebody else that it's important to. If I had more of a team, I'd probably forward it to somebody and say, Hey, I need you to deal with this. So be very quick to slide emails to your team members to have them reply. Um, especially if they have the bandwidth and they're qualified to do it, say, here, you take care of this. Um, it's a great way to empower your team, show trust. So, uh, so that's kind of, that's kind of stage one. Stage two is the, I call them the boring emails. <laughs> uh, the stuff that, that you have to do. So non-urgent, uh, you know, up here was our urgent stuff. Here's our non-urgent. Is it important? Uh, you know, archive it, create a task, do it later if it's not urgent. If it's not urgent and not important, just archive it, like get rid of it. Um, you know, I get a lot of AppSumo emails and I like getting those because I like seeing what they're offering. But if I'm busy and I, you know, I don't have time to try another thing or I look, you know, it doesn't look interesting, I'm going to archive it. Non-urgent, non-important, it's going to go away. Uh, next is saying no, man, it's hard to say no sometimes. Uh, but that's, that's an important piece of this is to say no. Um, and you can use canned, canned replies. You can actually Google, uh, saying no email reply. And I had found a, a list of those. Um, just say no. If you don't have time, just say no and archive it or just archive it. I got stuff that people, I got an email last couple of weeks, somebody sent me, um, you know, are you unhappy with your cleaning service? We'd like to give you a quote. It's me and I'm in a office in my garage. No, nope, I am. They don't need a cleaning service. And I'm, you know, I'm not unhappy with my cleaning service because it's me. So just, you know, get rid of it. Um, a meeting request. So if somebody needs something, and you have to do say, you know, Hey, can we talk about this? Sure. Let's, let's book a call. If you're not using a booking link like Calendly, you've got to get one because it will save you crazy amount of time going back and forth. It's amazing to me. The, the, the high level people that I, I work with that don't have Calendly, you can get a free Calendly account. And if somebody says, Hey, I'd like to meet with you. Great. Here's my link. Go book some time that fast it's a one or two sentence email and you're done and then you push it back to them a lot of what what i do and my philosophy is i will i will do push i will push emails back and depending on what it is i figure hey if if this is important to them they asked me a question i replied i hit archive i don't think about it until they reply back because if it's important to them they'll come back i don't do that with everything but that's kind of an overarching philosophy that I do is, uh, just, just push it back to them. Um, so need, so sometimes you need to call the sender. Okay. So this is, um, you know, those highly emotional emails and I am, I am guilty, guilty, guilty of sending these. If you get one of those, I'm trying not to send those anymore. I'm growing, uh, lots of counseling. Um, if you get one of those, don't reply. Just don't reply. If it makes you angry, if it makes you frustrated, if you're like, what, you know, what on earth is the problem with this person? Don't reply. Uh, maybe write the email and save it for the next day or just pick up the phone. One of the best strategies I've ever seen on this, uh, and I had a, a pastor at a, at a church one time do this. He would send me a text and he would say, may I call you? And I would get that text and I was like, I have to respond. I mean, that's a text that you have to respond to. May I call you? And so, you know, the response is either, yes, how about two o'clock today? Or sure, give me a call. And so then they call, the person calls right back. So that's a great way to initiate that. May I call you? Uh, or may I call you at 2 p.m., whatever. Um, so make the phone call. Don't reply. Okay. Uh, and then some, some emails, there's just, there's just no reply needed. Like 
I don't know why I got this. I didn't need this, you know, whatever. So, you know, important to, to take care of those. The other thing is, it's important to know how to filter your mail in your Gmail or Google Workspace account. When you get an email, let me go see if I can find one here. All right, so, so here's one from AppSumo. So I can go right over here and I can say uh, filter messages like these. All right, so it automatically puts supported AppSumo is who it's from. And you can see the list right here. Uh, I can create a filter. I can say uh, apply a label. I think I'll actually do that. New label app. So I'm going to create a label there. I'm going to apply to matching conversations. So all of these that are in this, like it's showing me everything I guess from AppSumo, I'm going to apply it. And then I'm going to create that filter. It's that easy. And I, I could have added to the filter, uh, you know, skip, skip the inbox archive it. As soon as I get AppSumo, it archives it. I kind of want to see these, so I didn't do that. But at least as they come in, I'll get them get them filtered. So that's that's super important to do for all of this. And then down here is uh, kind of the stage three. The stage three is where I kind of use automation to manage and see what I'm getting. Um, so here's the tag emails to Monday. All right, so here's an example. This is a custom scenario that may or may not fit what you're looking for, but I get, I get a lot of make emails, errors, broken warnings, like they've shut off, whatever. And so I have built this scenario in such a way that it actually pulls the name of the account. So you typically the client's name out of the email and it creates a new filter on the fly or it adds the filter to it and so now i have i have emails that are that are let's say error warning you know uh shut off and it has a tag with the client's name on it because i have a lot of clients they don't want me turning their stuff back on i'm just on the account and i get those and uh, i know as soon as i go turn them off those emails off that i wish i had them on to help the client out but so this is one of those things that I, I wanted a tag on each of those emails so I knew who it was. So now I can see the label of the client before I open the email. So I never have to open the email. I'm like, nope, that's not me. Archive, archive, archive. Nope, need to look at that one. So this one's a really, really super valuable one. Um, daily unsubscription digest. All right, I call this my unsubby email. This is super valuable to me. Let me go find one real quick. All right, so here's here's my, and I get these daily. Here's one I haven't looked at yet. So what I do is I I will archive all my um, all my emails in the in the um, like the social updates, forums, and promotions. Those boxes uh, I will I'll just archive those so they're not tempting me to look at them. And then once a day at 4 p.m., I send, which is corresponds with my, uh, this is right before my email session, I send myself an email. And so here is, here are all the newsletters I've received rolled up into one email. So I just have to check this one email. So I can just say, hey, uh, is there anything interesting in here? Zoom, Eventbrite, like I just scroll through here. And, uh, you know, I decide whether or not I look at it. If my automation can find an, an unsubscribe style, I don't even know who that is. I can actually click the unsubscribe link and it takes me right to the unsubscribe page. So I just unsubscribe from this without going to the email, without going to the bottom of it. Um, so, you know, I can just kind of look through here and see what kind of stuff I got. Ooh, sticker mule. I can click there and I can go look at the email. Uh, they have glitter stickers. Yeah, I might be interested in that. Um, but this is, you know, I'm done. I archive that, and and I don't have like I don't have to mess with it again. So this is the email that creates that, um, and it's searching 
the social category or updates or forums or promotions or unsubscribe or the body contains the word unsubscribe. So I'm looking for all of those every day. Uh, I'm looking for that unsubscribe link. I have some regex here looking for the unsubscribe ascribe link. Uh, then I'm aggregating the information and then I'm and uh, I'm aggregating it, aggregating it by sender by the sender name and then I'm putting that all together and I'm sending it in that email. So this this email sends this right here. And so you can see if I get more than one email, do I get more than one email from somebody? Yeah, right here. So here's a sender WordPress. Here's all the emails that came from WordPress. So it actually groups them together so I can see, you know, what they are. So that's a super, that's a super time saving automation that I have uh, that just sends me that data uh, every day. So here's another one, and I actually did a video for this. I'll, I'll link it here. Um, there are times where I need to gather or mine data out of my email. And so this is one of those times I was looking for, I had a client that was sending me Loom videos. I just couldn't find them. I kept looking, I looking, looking. Finally, I'd find them and I'd watch them and they were in an email. Then I'd, then I'd go away and then I'd come back and need them again. I couldn't find them. So this email actually, as I get emails, it's pulling Loom videos out of the email. Here's one here that ran. So it found a it found a Loom video there, and so it's 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 searching for an existing one. I'm getting the Loom name. I'm using a, a Neutrino API to get the Loom name off of the Loom page, and then I'm saving those to a Google Sheet. So all the Looms that I receive uh, are being saved to a Google Sheet. And I, I have the name of the person who sent it and their email and that kind of thing. So this is this is one of those super valuable ones that when I need to find a Loom email, I go to my Google Sheet, have it bookmarked, I go to that, and they're all right there instead of searching through my email. Because even though I'm using Google email and Google's like the search you know, the bomb for search. It's not just hard to find stuff. Um, okay. We do. Oh, that, that's the tag email. Okay. Weekly email sender analysis. This one. Okay. So this is another automated email sender analysis email right there. And what it does. So this, this ran from Monday, February 19th to February 23rd. So this is looking at a, um, Friday through Monday. I have those backwards. Start date. The start date is is Monday. The end date is is Friday. Those, those are backwards. Um, but it is it's looking at a a work week Monday through Friday, and it's saying how many emails did we get from no reply at us make dot com. All right, that's that's the email address that sends. Um, the, the, you know, notifications for scenarios. And so if the scenario is, you know, off or errored or, or, uh, turned off, um, that's the email it comes from. So I got 66 emails from that. Uh, I'm not going to filter those. The purpose of this email is to know how many emails I'm getting from who, and that maybe I want to filter these. Um, so I got 23 emails from me. I'm not going to filter that. Uh, 22 emails from WordPress at weblitica.com. I might filter those. Like, I don't need those. I regularly update my site. I, I really don't need those emails. So those I could filter. Here's another one I could filter. I got 16 of. Um, I got 10 emails from Manage WP and Loom. The Loom ones are helpful because those are saying, hey, somebody replied to your Loom or hey, somebody watched your Loom. Here's eight emails from WordPress. So the point of this email is to say, hey, are there some email addresses I could filter or automatically send to the archive that I never have to look at again? And so, you know, there's there's 22 emails this week. I could have sent straight to the archive if I, if I filtered WordPress at weblitica.com. So that's, that's what that is. And here's, here's what this one does. So it's, it's a little more complex. So it's watching for emails. There it is. 
So I'm getting all mail. I'm checking all the mail. I'm getting a thousand results. And so what I'm doing is I'm counting and I'm counting by the sender email address. And I'm using this, I'm aggregating by the count. So that's why I'm able to get these in order. Uh, so I have 66 and 52, then 23, then 22. Uh, that's what I'm doing is I'm, I'm aggregating by that count. And then because make has trouble sorting by numbers, if you put it in an, an array, I'm adding it to the data store. And then here I'm getting that data store record. I'm aggregating together the, the text. So let's see, email count, sort by email count, descending. So I'm looking for the email count descending and uh, the email address exists. I'm aggregating, I'm grouping by the email count and then I'm grouping here. This is the, the, the final HTML that goes into the, to that email. And then I'm then I'm deleting all the records and I'm sending that email. Sending, oh, I keep going on the wrong tab. Sending this email right here. So again, super valuable. You know, like here I got two, two emails that I got 11 of, two that I got 10 of. Uh, super valuable. And I can go through here and say, hey, I want to filter these emails and, um, you know, get, get rid of them. I'm going to go here. End date, start date, edit this scenario real quick. And this is the start date. And I just got those formatted in HTML and there's the text that's, that's aggregated there. So, um, that's that again, that's a super helpful email. Uh, let's go, let's talk about, I've got a peak hour analysis scenario that I did. Uh, this is somewhere Tim Ferriss. I've, I've not used it recently. The idea here is what hours of the day do I get the most email and I should check emails those times. I, I haven't done that. Um, I have, uh, I've just blocked out time. Let's go over here. All right. So like, here's like, here's the time here, 8 AM and then five to five 30. So I have those, have those those um, times blocked and I just have it repeating forever and I get a reminder and so that's that's the times that I check email and I have it I have it scheduled for 30 minutes um, I, I rarely ever use the 30 minutes unless I get you know distracted by uh, app sumo or something I spend too much time on app sumo I keep talking about it way too much uh, the other thing I want to share with you is I'm using a tool called Simplify Gmail. This is a Chrome extension. It's a it's a paid Chrome extension, and it's 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 really I've actually started paying for it. I like it. My plan it's like it's like two dollars two dollars a month. But it's got a lot, a lot of features that make checking your email better. Uh, so, for example, when you're checking your email, you should be full screen like this. So I've got this email open. I should be full screen. A lot of people check their email with the panel on the side where you can see the emails. And so you're checking your email, you're replying to this, and a new one comes in. It's like, ooh, what's that? And so you're constantly distracted. You should have it open like this. You shouldn't even have the side panel open. I, ha I I can hover here and it'll come open, but when I come back, it, it closes. So this is really how you're supposed to check email to be the most productive. Um, the other thing is turn off, I got away from my list over here. Turn off your notifications. Uh, I, I do have a Microsoft account with a client and um, every time the, e every time I get an email, it would ding. Ding. So I'd be working on something else. Ding. And I'd run over to my email and see what it is. I turn that thing off, turn it off, turn off your phone notifications, uh, view your emails in full screen. Like I just showed you, um, filter unnecessary emails, uh, simplify Gmail again, this, I, I love the, and you can try this for a month, try it for a month, try it for a month and see if you like it. 
it has all these options for no, for modifying thing you know customize fonts set the zoom width you know i can choose you know message width i can make it narrow i've just made it full screen zoom content you can zoom stuff um it's just it's it's again this was created by a gmail employee former gmail employee uh, and he just, he just went through all the different things that he's that over time, he's like, man, I wish when we created Gmail, we did it this way and, uh, super, super helpful. Uh, back to my list. I don't want to miss anything. Oh, I have a Gmail sweep. I didn't show you this. I have a Gmail sweep automation and what it does is, so I've got like, I've got promotions, social, updates forums uh we're okay so linkedin so here like here's here, i've i've got linkedin things automatically being labeled so here's all the linkedin stuff here's there's a cool thing that this this has so here's all the linkedin and, and they're 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 grouped together and i can archive all of those at once one two three four five six seven eight watch this Boop, they're gone so that's pretty cool when you when you've got them grouped together like that you can archive them um, and so again, the, the, the automation I have here, it runs at eight and five, which are my email checking times. And so what it does is it comes through here and just archives all of the promotions, all of the social updates. We're going to get that, man, I got a bunch of stuff Want all of it. So what it does is it is it archives all the stuff up here. So you know if you if you have stuff up here, you'll see a, a a little it'll tell you what's up here, and it's really tempting to go up there and look at it. But what I do is I run that automation. And I said everything in promotion, social updates, and forums at 8 a.m. and at 4 4 or at 5 p.m. when I check my emails, archive it all. That way there's nothing up here. That stuff will come through while I'm checking my email, but for the most part this this is empty. And so, um, it doesn't seem to be working. I think I need to check this because I got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, but that's, that's how I use, how I use my Gmail. Uh, let me look through this list here. Productivity. It, when you, when you do your email sessions, a lot of times I will, um, I'll put productivity music on. Uh, I love brain FM. Um, and, you can, uh, there'll be a link in the description for brain FM. You can get free 30 days. And, uh, I, I love it because it's, it's, a, it's like 3d music that helps your brain focus. It also can help you sleep and things. And, uh, back when I, I had a lot of anxiety when I had my foot surgery and, and the, the post-op for it. And, and there's times I just couldn't sleep and I put brain FM on and it would really calm my brain down and, and help that anxiety. Um, They've got, they've got free, if you go, if you go to YouTube, if you go to Brain Hello. FM, uh, go to their channel. They actually have some free music you can listen to. This is to. your brain when you're struggling. Whoa. Uh, so they've got like 30 minutes, deep sleep, fall asleep. Um, they've got some, here, focus, 30 minute focus. Put some focus music on. Uh, it, it, this is better to listen with earbuds because the, the music, I call it 3D music, the music kind of, the, the tones and things go back and forth from the left and right channel. And it, it it's it's a science the way they do this, but it's, um, uh, I don't know, there's a video that tells you about it, but it's a scientific thing they've done to help you focus. And, you know, there there, there is some science I know back and forth, you know, if, if you if things go back and forth or you tap yourself back and forth, it kind of relaxes your brain. So check that out. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, we've talked about notifications, really. You don't want any distractions. You don't want any dopamine hits. You want your, your, your sounds to be off. Uh, here's a couple other apps I'll show you. This one's called typing DNA focus and it is uh, it's a free app. It's pretty cool. But it will monitor your typing and it'll it'll tell you when you're most focused, when you're most stressed. Um, it's interesting 
two days apart. I was most focused and most stressed at, at 2 p.m. and most tired. This is this is somewhat helpful. Uh, it might be interesting for you to, to check this out and, and see what you think. Um, and, you know, if, if you're trying to figure out what's the best time, what's my most focused time to do email, this tool might help you with that. Uh, there's another cool tool that I've got open here. And this is this is called Crystal. Um, thought I already answered this. All right, so this is Crystal. So Crystal actually will look at uh, your personality profile and your disk assessment. Uh, and and it'll actually tell you what how, how you could should communicate with somebody. And this is really great. It works in Gmail. It works on LinkedIn. I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, I got to add this to Chrome, add extension. I used it in my trial ran out and I, I didn't, I didn't re up. So, um, all right. So view myself on LinkedIn. If we go to LinkedIn, uh, this is, this is re it's really fascinating, but you click right here and view personality and this is me. And so uh, CD, so that is, that is the disk assessment. And uh, here's my disk map. Yeah, I'm a CD. Uh, at one point I, well, I took it, I, I was equally a C and D, so now I'm a little bit heavier on C. So this is actually um, telling you, like here's behavior, seeking evidence to support claims, separating facts from emotions when making decisions, absorbing information more quickly than others. That totally describes me. Uh, writing styles. This is how you should communicate with me. Uh, how to drive Andy to take action. Here are my energizers, my drains. When speaking to Andy, set clear expectations. Like this is this is so spot on. It's a little scary. Uh, but you can do this, and then you can go to somebody else's profile, and it will uh, it will you know tell you about them. Uh, this guy here is a this guy got, has a YouTube channel. It's doing really well. So he's an influencer. Yeah, he's totally an influencer. Um, you know, this is this is where he is. So we're 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 in opposite places on the disc. Um, and and he's very different than me. He's got a YouTube channel that's that's growing very well. So uh, provide a quick, convenient call to action. Make your message entertaining. Invite them to a live conversation. Yeah. That, that, totally seems like Nick. I don't, I don't know Nick. I've just watched some of his YouTube videos. And so this, this crystal app, um, is, is super helpful if you're trying to figure out the best way to communicate with people and, uh, kind of understand where they're coming from. It'll tell you, you know, how, what kind of emails to type back to them. How, you know, what, what do you say in the email? How do you phrase it? Um, let me go down here. I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything. Yeah, so it looks like I've got everything. But again, this is this is that flow, and it's it's really not as complicated as it looks. This stuff down here is automation. Um, you know, again, this this is meant to help you be as efficient with your email as possible, and not get bogged down by it don't spend eight to 11 hours a week on email. Uh, you need to be spending that time on, on work. So, you know, I'm spending, uh, 40, really about 40 minutes a day on email. And, um, it's just, it's just been much more efficient. I've gotten away from my inbox and this has been so helpful to me. So if, this has been helpful for you. Uh, just ask that you give me a thumbs up. This is a quite a, a quite different video than I'm used to doing. And uh, I, I just wanted to run through this system and share it with you to help you with your email. Uh, consider subscribing. Check out the description for links to get help with make.com or contact me in any other way. And uh, thank you for watching this very long video and I'll see you next time.